Greetings, Richard Fulmer here, and welcome to episode 107 of Richard's Rock Rambles. So we're carrying on looking at our hidden gem section, although today's record album is more of a, a forgotten classic, if you like, an overlooked album, as opposed to a hidden one. We're talking about the band Black Sabbath, one of my favorite bands, as you all well know, and the album that was to be the final album that Ozzy sang on in the 70s period. Of course, he would come back for the reunion album called 13, but the one we're going to talk about is Never Say Die from 1978. And you know, 78 was a time for Sabbath when things weren't going that well. I think the drugs and the endless touring had taken their toll on the entire band, but in particular, Ozzy was hitting the booze pretty hard. And they were kind of going downhill. You know, they would re research with uh, Ronnie James Dio in the band. But this was the end of the golden era of Bill Ward, Giza Butler, Tony Iommi, and of course, Ozzy Osbourne. So the album was recorded at Sounds Interchange Studios in Toronto, Canada, between January and May of 1978. And it was released in September uh, the 28th. 1978, that same year, on the Vertigo label, and it was produced by the band Black Sabbath. And I think that is one of the issues here. Tony Iommi was always trying to expand the sound of Black Sabbath, trying to incorporate new things, ever since the days of, say, Volume 4. Ozzy, on the other hand, wanted to keep things the same. He didn't like all the changes, and he wasn't very happy with the recording of this album. For me... It's got a lot going for it. You know, a lot of guys are sort of, they don't worry about Never Say Die or Technical Ecstasy, the previous album. But for me, it's got a lot going for it. Some really great songs, excellent songwriting, some great hooks, uh, songs that stick in your head. In fact, I think one of the songs on here, A Hard Road, actually landed up with them doing it on uh, Top of the Pops, which is, I mean, Black Sabbath was never really a band that you would find on Top of the Pops, which is mostly for the pop acts. Cheers. So, in the band at the time, obviously, you had Ozzy Osbourne on lead and backing vocals. You had Tony Iommi on guitar and backing vocals on A Hard Road, so he also sang on that. Geezer Butler, bass and backing vocals on A Hard Road. And Bill Ward, drums, lead vocals on swinging the chain and backing vocals on a hard road. Now, let me just tell you that Bill Ward is the sort of gem in this album. He's a great singer. Um, I mean, I'm not so sure about now because he's well into his 70s, but back then in the 78, the track that he sang on, Swinging the Chain, was amazing. And his drumming on this album was exceptional. All over the place, lots of little jazz fills. Uh, not just pounding away. That's what I loved about Bill Ward. You know, you could see he had a jazz background. All these little intricate fills and things, which kind of set him apart from the, the run-of-the-mill um, hard rock drummer. So he sang on lead vocal on that. Great voice. And, and he also did backing vocals on a hard road. And, of course, excellent drumming. As well as having Don Airy on keyboards. And, of course, Don Airy at the moment or has been for a while now, the keyboardist for um, Deep Purple. He also, after Sabbath, he ended up being the keyboardist for Ozzy in his, one of his solo albums, I think either the first or second. I think he was on Diary of a Madman. But he appears on here as well with some nice synth work and uh, I think some Hammond as well. And a guy by the name of John Elstar, harmonica on Swinging the Chain, a great harmonica player. Not too sure where he was from or what band he was in. But he did a, a pretty good job. So let's um, have a look at the album. Sorry, it's extremely cold here in Cape Town at the moment. And the only thing I'll find that really warms me up is a nice glass of red wine. So please bear with me on that score. <laughs> Any excuse. Um, so this is the album cover. Very strange album cover. If I'm not mistaken, this is a hypnosis cover. I might be wrong. But yeah, two sort of uh, pilots, I suppose you'd call them, air pilots, fighter pilots, never say die. And I don't know if you can see much in the back cover there. That's, sorry for all the glare and everything else. 
you can see the band on stage with Ozzy doing his thing. And this is the remastered um, version, which is really cool. So on the tracks, you got Never Say Die, the title track, which is a full-on rocker. Really up-tempo. I love that track. It just sets the tone for me. Johnny Blade, interesting song about, uh, I think it was about drug addiction and about gangsterism and what have you. Very dark lyrics. I think Giza Butler again outshined himself in this album with the lyrics. Johnny Blade, I think that was kind of like a single from this album. Junior's Eyes, that was also good. A Hard Road, that was the big commercial hit, if you want to call them commercial. But it was kind of like a sing-along track. Probably my least favorite track on here, although it was the one that was released as a single. It doesn't do much for me. Shockwave, that's quite a heavy track. Some nice guitar work from Tony Omi. Air Dance, Over to You. Breakout and my personal favorite from this album, Swinging the Chain, which has got about three or four different parts to it. And right at the end, it's a brutal riff from Tony Iommi. Of course, Bill Ward sang lead vocals on that. Some great drumming as well. Johnny Blade, the drumming on there is exceptional. A lot of people tend to overlook as to what Bill Ward brought to this band, especially the first albums or the first albums that he was involved with. I mean, is this a volume four? Is it a Masters of Reality? Is it a Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath? No, it's not. It's not up there with those iconic albums, but it's not as bad as people make out. Give this another chance. Give it another listen. If you've got it stashed away in your collection and you haven't tried it for a while or you've, or you've sort of ignored it, Listen to it with fresh ears. You know, when I first heard this many, many years ago, I was also kind of, uh, you know, I, I suppose they, they just had to produce an album contractually and the guys were not at their best. But over the years, I've really got to like this album, as well as Technical Ecstasy, the one before, and a few other Sabbaths like Born Again, which most people don't, you know, give them very poor ratings. But I really think this is a hidden gem or an overlooked gem, I should say. Black Sabbath's Never Say Die from 1978. Unfortunately, when they toured on the back of this, who did they have as an opening act? The Happening, The Young, The Hungry, Van Halen. Probably not the best band to have opening for you if you're on a downward trajectory. <laughs> I mean, those guys were firing at that stage. Van Halen was all over the place. And of course, their first album would go on stratospheric and sold gazillions of copies. And Sabbath, unfortunately, at that stage, were at the other end of the scale. They were, you know, doing the drugs thing, and yeah, the rest is history. But do yourselves a favor. Give us another listen. Crank it up. It's, it's got to be listened to loud. There's some nice synthesizer work here from Don Airy as well, like I mentioned. And uh, always Tony Iommi's guitar work is amazing. Some great lead breaks on here as well, um, especially on Breakout, um, Junior's Eyes. Yeah, I like this. Give it another try. There we go, guys. Have yourselves a great week. And uh, stay warm out there if you're in Cape Town, like I am. It's pretty chilly. And I'll uh, catch you again soon for another hidden gem. Take it easy. Cheers.